Hello everybody and welcome to today's Reckon webinar, Automate Your Data Entry for Reckon Accounts. I'd like to thank you for joining us, whether you're here in Australia or New Zealand or indeed anywhere in the world. Before we get started, we always do some housekeeping for our webinar series. Some of you may not be familiar with GoToWebinar or webinar technology, so I'd just like to point out there is a control panel at the top right of your system, generally is where it goes by default. And if you can't hear me, which is a bit of a mute point, pardon the pun, then hopefully you've discovered the telephone option or you've done a sound check with your speakers to get them working. Today's session will be muted for all attendees. We have quite a large group listening in and for clarity and so we can move through the presentation, uh, we'll get the presenters to present throughout the presentation and we'll have a question and answer session at the end. During the webinar, I will personally be answering questions and you'll find the question box again in the control panel. You can actually click on the little box with the arrow in it to make it a standalone question box or you can just type into the control panel area where it's nested. Uh, we will try and answer as many questions as we can during the session. However, if there's a common theme, which there generally is with some common questions, we'll open that up to the panel at the end and we'll ask each presenter to respond in kind. And finally, if you're watching this on one screen, you might find that the control panel gets in the way of the presentation. So there is a small orange button at the top of the control panel with an arrow pointing right. You can just click on that and it will minimize the control panel. And if you need to enlarge it to type a question, for example, then you just click on that again. So an overview of today's session Primarily, we want to introduce you to three integrated add-ons for Reckon Accounts, and these will focus primarily on accounts payable automation, of course, to improve business efficiencies and workflows. And that'll be a general theme throughout today's presentations. Key features of each application uh, will be on show by each presenter. And as, as I said, we'll focus on accounts payable and how modern tools such as these can dramatically improve your internal workflow and processes. And best of all, these apps seamlessly integrate with your Reckon Accounts software. So hopefully by the end of today you'll have learned a little bit more about the technologies available to automate your business processes and reduce manual data entry within your business. For large businesses that may mean you're being overwhelmed by the sheer volume of invoices you're getting through the door and the accuracy or lack of accuracy in some cases and you want to improve that. For a smaller business it's generally around trying to free up your staff. Generally, you've got a small team, one or two people perhaps doing data entry, or maybe it's yourself as the business owner, and you'd rather spend that time concentrating on you know, more important aspects of your business, proving customers through the door, or chasing overdue accounts, rather than typing in data day in, day out. So our presenters today are Entryless, The Data Line Group, and Personable. Entryless and Personable are both based in California in the US, and DataLine is based in Chatswood, Sydney, New South Wales. So our first presenter today is Entryless, as I said, based in California in the US, West Coast. And Entryless provides accounts payable software as a service. Their platform offers a comprehensive, fully automated accounts payable solution that eliminates manual tasks, improves efficiency of bill management, and indeed accelerates the payment of the bill itself. And you'll find that's a common theme uh, with all the vendors presenting today. The Entryless platform frees up staff resources, as we mentioned previously, that's a, a key goal of a business, by crunching and syncing all the accounts payable data into Reckon Accounts. This gives companies 100% online visibility to their accounts payable data from day one. They never manually enter a bill into their accounting systems again, and wouldn't that be fantastic? So presenting for us today from Entryless, we have Mike Galaza, the founder and CEO of Entryless, and Bobby Kimmis, the sales lead. Entryless is a Silicon Valley startup, and Forbes recently recognized Entryless as a powerful and growing force in this space in the US, and no doubt uh, the guys of global aspirations, hence coming to Australia and making our lives easier as well. Mike comes at accounting problems from his previous role as the head of a large team of accountants in a large manufacturing company, and he looks at the bookends of the financial universe. And if there's any of you out there who have worked for a large manufacturing company in the past, as I have, uh, you will know the inundation you get from suppliers' bills day in, day out. Business Insider recently named Mike, and I like this Mike, as one of the 13 badass immigrant entrepreneurs in technology. Mike's also a Quartz.com guest contributor, 
and is a graduate of Silicon Valley's Founder Institute. So over to you, Mike. All right, perfect. Uh, thank you, Jason. It's a great pleasure to be here with you and uh, all the attendees. I see that we have hundreds of uh, people joining from Australia, New Zealand, and all over the world. So th thanks, Jason. How are you? Excellent. Thank you, Mike. I'm sure you'll be upbeat as usual for this presentation. <laughs> yes, yes. So let me tell everybody, we're truly excited to be here today because Today we're unveiling our integration with Recon. Uh, we've been working uh, across this year to truly bring you uh, integration that works for you in your uh, Recon environment. So we are truly proud of uh, the integration that we were able uh, to, to build together. And uh, we just look forward for automating the builds for, for everybody and, uh, and, and really remove this pain point and allow businesses and accountants to scale their, their, their business, their practice. Uh, with me today, I have here Bobby Camis. He's our sales leader at Entrelist, and he will be showcasing uh, Entrelist in a couple minutes as well. Uh, but before we dive into the product demo, I just wanted to uh, show quickly here what's the, uh, what we have prepared for the agenda. So as an, as an introduction, I just wanted to uh, provide a little bit more background about Entrelist, why you should be choosing Entrelist, uh, how you, we can help you manage your cash flow, and of course, we'll be doing the the demo of Entrelist and, and we'll be addressing some questions at the end of the call after we have all the other exciting partners as well uh, of Freecon Present. So with that, uh, a couple of years ago I just wanted to tell you that I was managing the bills of a large manufacturing company and I had a team of accountants. I was uh, leading the, the financial operations for, for that business and something that truly really struck me was that um, the profit and loss statements, the expense reports, balance sheet, they were always being late because we didn't have the bills on time. And sometimes even though we had the bills on time, they were not in the system. They were not in the accounting system. And that's, what, that's something that really bothered me. And, and, uh, and that's why I actually found it interesting to come up with a solution that would actually translate those bills coming from your suppliers, call it invoices, call it receipts, and bring them over to your accounting system. And that's why I found an entrelist, and uh, since then we've had a blast. We have over uh, 20,000 uh, companies that are actively using the platform, and we look forward to serve the thousands of companies uh, or hundreds of thousands of companies that uh, Recon has. So we're truly excited about this partnership. So uh, just to go over a little bit more as uh, why to entrelist, we have found that on a smaller scale, so we have uh, one business, uh, one of our uh, clients, uh, customers, they are saving at least four hours every single week. So that means that four hours, they don't need to be spending that time in manually typing the bills into their accounting system. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we think that is truly transformative because this company, they only have 50 bills. And one thing that we're going to be showcasing today, and Bobby's going to help me showcase that today, is that it's not only about how you enter the data into Recon, right? It's not only about uh, transforming that data into an expense uh, item in Recon, but it's really about the process that is before that, how you gather those bills from your suppliers. If you're an accountant, how you, do you get those bills from your clients? And then how do you pile them up how do you get them somewhere in order for someone to type those bills inside Recon? So I think that's, that's the key primary thing, that uh, there are more workflows where we help automate the whole AP process that is not only entitled to the mere, uh, to the pure uh, data entry of things. And, uh, and that's where we think that uh, we're truly transformative because we have uh, a lot of workflows that are very consistent and very simple and that you can take advantage on. And uh, one more thing to mention before we jump into the demo is that uh, we are very excited uh, of the integration with Recon, uh, as I mentioned. So we really encourage you to take advantage of that. So for the next couple of months, we are offering a personalized onboarding uh, service for Recon accounts. So if uh, you want to come up and, and bring over some accounts, we'll be able to go hand by hand with you. So without further ado, I have Bobby with here. Bobby, thank you. Hey, thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate your time. Uh, we're really proud of being part of Recon uh, integration, actually. As uh, far as uh, launching this integration with Recon and Interless, 
what I want to do is just do some promotions basically and give you a 50% off for one year and those are just for all Rakuten customers and that's the code if you need that code we can email it to you as well you can request that from Jason will be more than happy to send it to you I'm gonna leave that code on the front for just 10 seconds in case someone wanted to grab it it's 50% only Rakuten customers uh, for one year all right, thank you guys. Um, as I said, if you missed it, uh, let me know. I'll send it to Jason, and Jason basically can, can send it to you. I want to dive in into the product. I want to show you how easy, how simple it is to basically enter your bills into Reckon. We want to make it very easy. Now, Reckon manage all your accounting. We want to make, uh, uh, be able to cut time on your manual entry when it comes to your invoices. Now, I want to start from the beginning. When you do the integration with Reckon, the first thing you really wanted to check, you want to go into the company setting and see if all the chart of accounts populated into entry list. And the way you can do that, I'll show you, give me one second here, I can go into the system really quick. So when you go into company settings, you can click on accounting and basically you want to check and see all the chart of accounts populated into entry list. If that happens, it means the integration is complete. Now, if you... Yeah, and this is where uh, we can help you. It's really seamless integration, so you only really need to download a file so that you can connect to your Recon account and grant some uh, admin access to Entryless. And once you do that, uh, you will be able to, to get, uh, as well, all the pertinent data populated because we essentially connect directly uh, to your local desktop. So that's something that uh, we totally uh, can do for you. And that way you can get all your chart of accounts, you can get all your uh, suppliers, and uh, as well as your, your, your tax rates. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. So now you've got Kraken integrated. The next thing you want to do is upload your bills. There's four ways of you to upload uh, your invoices, your bills into Entryless. And I'm going to go through all of them. The first way is you can drag and drop. Um, if you have the bills are sitting on your desktop, you don't need to do it one by one. You can drag a bunch of them and drop them. Once you see that uh, check, basically green check circle, means everything populated into Entryless. That's the first way. The second way is if you have a cloud storage, uh, whether it's Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, you can basically um, create a unique folder, and anytime you upload a bill into that folder, will automatically upload into Entryless and push it into Reckon once it gets approved, and we're gonna go through that in a second. The third thing is we have a mobile application for um, Android and iOS. Uh, if you have the bell on your desk, um, you wanna enter it into Reckon, all what you do, you take a picture of it, and it will be automatically uploaded into Entryless, and you can go and get it approved and push it forward. The last uh, way of you being able to uh, uh, upload your bills that we create when you set up this system we create a unique email your clients can basically email those bills to that specific email and it will come in automatically into enter and be uploaded into the system for you to basically review them and approve them yeah and uh, something that is very exciting over here is that you can set up uh, cloud storage for each of your clients so if you are a business you can set it up for you and Entryless is going to go and pick up every single item out of Box, out of Dropbox and out of Google Drive. Uh, this is truly transformative. In fact, I think that uh, we received, uh, we had a jump uh, of I think probably like 50% of the amount of bills that we were receiving from month to month and, uh, and that was something that it was very exciting to see uh, how it, we really help businesses to drive the transformation inside their companies by uh, gathering their bills automatically. So enter this goes, pick up your bills, pick up your files, and automatically syncs them. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to delete the, the files from uh, those systems. You can leave them there if you want. You can add more. Uh, we will know every time there's a new uh, type of uh, file that uh, we can, that Entryless system can ingest. And, uh, and that's the same if you uh, drag and drop them. So this is something that is totally up to you. And uh, also one thing that uh, people really like about Entryless is that you can uh, submit all the files in one PDF as long as they are less than 12 megabytes. 
So you can do, have your scanner, you can put 50 bills in one PDF, that's totally fine. And Trulis is going to make a breakdown of every individual bill and will create a separate expense that will flow directly into your Recon account. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. So once you get all the uh, invoices uploaded, now you are ready to view these invoices and basically approve them and get them synced into Recon. Uh, there's two ways of you approving these bills. The first way you can click on all of them and do a bulk approval and sync or reject all of them at the same time. When you start with entry list, we encourage you to do a side-by-side -side review before uh, you start doing bulk approvals just to make sure all the information is being populated correctly. Um, just so you know, the um, if you notice there is a, a wrong basically uh, uh, supplier name. All the suppliers, when you when you pop, when you did the integration, all the suppliers are populated here. You can actually choose and select the right supplier. Now, if for some reason you uploaded a bill and the supplier name is not there, that's that's not a common thing. You can actually edit and add a new supplier from here. Once you click save, it will save it into an entry list and it will actually sync it into Reckon as well. Yeah, and uh, so this is where we basically have uh, the core value proposition of Entryless and how we can help you with, uh, with Recon. Uh, if you see on this, this uh, email, this is, uh, I just recently subscribed to the New York Times, so I just forwarded this uh, email that I received as a receipt from uh, the New York Times, and I, I just got it uh, over here automated. So if you see, uh, we capture the, well, first here, here's my email, right? So it's coming from my email, and uh, it was, uh, past a couple of Sundays. So I have here the date. So the date is perfectly fine, November 27, and uh, the total is uh, 1250. So uh, we got it uh, perfectly correct. So 1250 is what we get captured. And then, as we were mentioning, we have the chart of accounts that uh, we are importing from your Recon account. So you will be able to select that expense account over here and, uh, and then just uh, uh, put, it, put it over here. So in this case, I'm just going to say it's cost of goods. And uh, once you select the expense account, we, the tax rate, we import the logic as well from Recon. So that tax rate is going to get automatically tagged. Uh, in this case, for this account, I, I don't have that, uh, that logic, but we auto-populate over here. And we also capture taxes, essentially GST, if, uh, if, if there is any. Uh, you can also, for whatever reason, if uh, you want to change or if it's an inclusive, Let's say this, this transaction is inclusive. You can just change it to inclusive, and uh, we'll be able to calculate the tax based on your tax rate. So essentially, if the tax rate here was, let's say, 10%, uh, the tax rate in here is going to get automatically populated. And uh, that's another benefit that, that Entryless has. Now, if you want to split the item, you can also always add more lines and split the item or the expense if you want. So those are just some uh, of the added benefits that, that we have. We essentially capture the whole. Uh, the whole transaction. If I go back here to the list, you also have a second way of approving the bills. So we just show the side by side, but you can always use the actual uh, summary or the expense list and, and go over everything. If, uh, if I select, let's say, an account over here, let's say, if, uh, uh, less provision, I'll just select this one. Uh, any chart of account will get tagged to, or any expense account related to this supplier is going to get tagged. And then Entryless also remembers that expense account so that you can, uh, so you don't need to type it every time that you have an expense from that particular uh, supplier, and then you can approve it directly from, from, from here. If I uh, go and open the, the one that we were reviewing, uh, the, the New York Times one, uh, you will see as well over here the, the actual, uh, the actual expense, and this is truly transformative for companies, even if you have, let's say, 20, 30 invoices a month or bills, expenses. Um, this means that it's time that you gain for your own practice to get more business, serve your clients better, or if you're more business, that really removes a huge burden of uh, administrative uh, costs that you have, uh, so you can ex spend your time doing better things. And uh, this is just one of the benefits. And to close the demo over here, of course, we look forward for all the questions at the end. Um, 
we have another added benefit for the accountants. So uh, I'll be showcasing here quickly just uh, the last part. And uh, if you're an accountant, you can totally take advantage of our accountants and bookkeepers edition. So in here, uh, you have a special partner practice uh, benefits that uh, you can uh, uh, connect with Bobby and, and we can uh, review them in detail. But essentially, you get uh, added features like adding more companies and uh, having the dashboard where you can control all, all your companies. Uh, we have sub-users that you can add so you can, they can approve the, the bills. And, uh, and we have other features that we'll gladly uh, review with you. So with that, I'd like to pass it over to Jason. And uh, we look forward to uh, uh, connecting with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Bobby and Mike. Very much appreciated. Uh, let me just flick back to my screen. OK, so we've got uh, Earl White from Dataline, based here in Sydney, Australia. Chatswood to be precise. Uh, now Dataline, as I said, is an Australian company, been around for 25 years, established in the accounts payable automation and payment solutions part of the sector. And in 25 years, as you would expect, they've processed millions of transactions, including some of Australia's largest banks, corporations, and both federal and state departments. So that's their background is the enterprise space. Uh, now Dataline's come on board, as I said, from the enterprise space and released a new solution, Dataline API Plus, uh, looking at the SME market. And, and of course, we, we love that type of experience coming down into the SME space from the enterprise area. It has a deep two-way integration with Reckon Accounts. It does API Plus uh, as a workflow management tool and automatically routes invoices for approval to work with a vast range of business scenarios. So Earl can correct me on this, but uh, the guys are really interested in setting up automated workflows that are, are particular to your business and that's what they specialize in. But there's no upfront fees for full implementation and training is included uh, once you buy the package. And like everyone here today, they're in the wrong webinar if they didn't. They aim to reduce the accounts payable overhead by at least 80%. Not sure if you can guarantee that, Earl, but uh, I'm sure they can. It's generally the industry standard. All right, great. So just introducing Earl. Earl's been in the industry for over 30 years. I've known him myself for quite some time now. Um, he's spent the last decade in SME accounting in the add-on space. Something I didn't know about Earl, he's got a strong academic interest in the sciences, and this year sees him wrap up a Master of Science degree uh, researching the area of computational Astrophysics, that can't be true, that can't be true, Earl. Oh, everyone's got to have a hobby, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, everyone, I'll uh, hand over to Earl as the presenter. Uh, Earl will be joined today by Dataline CTO, Mark Whelan. Mark's been working with us to bring the Reckon integration uh, on board, and he's been working really closely with us. Obviously, it helps being at Chatswood, which is just up the road from uh, Reckon HQ at North Sydney. Mark's also been in the industry a very long time and he's had a successful history working with, again, some of the largest banks such as ANZ, Australian Stock Exchange, Revlon, New South Wales Fire and Rescue, ING, Alliance, National Australia Bank, goes on and on and on. Haven't got time to read them all out, Mark, but uh, <laughs> very well done on those accomplishments for sure. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Earl White from Dataline. Thanks, Jason. Look, I hope everyone can see uh, the screen OK. We're just going to uh, do a very brief introduction to data line, as, uh, as you indicated there. Look, we, we take a different approach to, um, I think, a few of the, um, the other companies. We, we've sort of uh, migrated from the, uh, the enterprise space. You know, we've been around for a while. We've put through a lot of transactions. And some years ago, we realised that many of the problems that we solved for the enterprises in terms of accounts payable automation exists uh, in the, the SME, the small to medium enterprise space. And um, we've been rolling that out into uh, our, our smaller customers for a while and we've just recently completed our integration of our data line APA Plus product to the Reckon Accounts desktop environment. Look, there's some of the, the companies we've worked with at the, uh, the, the top end of town. So, you know, we, for example, processed the accounts payable stuff for you know, places like Revlon, Talent2, SG Fleet, um, a new customer is Ansto who do the atomic reactor just south of Sydney. So we've, we've got a lot, of, um, a lot of experience and a lot of expertise in the sort of scenarios of authorization, workflow, making sure that data gets in properly. Um, look, I, I think uh, as you mentioned, 
everyone realises there's a lot of issues with um, manually processing your accounts payable, um, both in terms of staff time that's, that's spent doing it, but there's also a lot of time and a lot of effort that's perhaps put into doing things like you know, handling uh, uh, duplicate payments, people being chased for late payments, and of course you lose visibility of what's going on throughout the month if they're all done manually. Uh, and of course, being able to put a proper control structure around that, that's also really important. So we, we're really looking at it from the point of view, we want to make life better for the average SME customer. So what happens? And um, you know, we, we talk about the percentage time and all the rest of it. Look, he, he's an Australian SME customer. Um, these guys do equipment hire um, in northern Tasmania. They, uh, they build roads and they hire out stuff to build you know, heavy, heavy construction. T Tony, the, the GM there, was telling us that um, they were spending about seven or eight days a month processing, I suppose, some hundreds of invoices. Now they're spending three hours a month. And uh, the other thing we can also say is they're now doing it with pretty much 100% accuracy. And of course, we, uh, we set them up and got them going without any, uh, without any upfront costs. Now, um, as we mentioned before, where as you said, it's a um, this is an outsourced service. Uh, we handle all the processing in house, and we also realise the fact that paper and PDF and the sort of ways that people receive invoices in the Australian New Zealand marketplace are not perfect. And we really rely on the human verification of every invoice, apart from the scanning and the OCR process. So look, how does the data line process work? Uh, first of all, you've got to get your invoices over to us. Now, we're happy to take the invoices that you receive via email, uh, just forward them over to us, or if you receive them as, as paper invoices, just drop them on your scanner and uh, scan and email them over to us. So if you've got them on paper, that's how we handle them. And of course, once they arrive, we have a system called Accuracy Mate. So we don't um, ask you to do things um, in terms of any uh, data correction or error correction or, 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 or checking for duplicates for that matter. Uh, what we do is we extract all the information for you and we manually check each invoice to make sure it's spot on. And in fact, uh, that's uh, some of our team in our data verification centre um, this morning uh, with the Sydney rain outside. So apart from us scanning and OCRing each invoice, we will manually check each one as well. So once that um, the invoice is received from us, and as part of the, part of that process, we match up the supplier. We check things like ABNs um, directly from the uh, the Reckon system. We then load them up to our uh, data uh, data line API API portal for uh, a, like a workflow which lets you approve the invoices based on a whole range of factors. We really try and automate this as much as possible. Um, we allow you to have any number of users on the portal, um, and we also have a role-based access. So we can control who can do what of, on, the, uh, on the invoices. Your approval route can be based on everything from like a, a dollar limit. So in other words, some people might be allowed to approve invoices up to say $500 or it might be a case of it needs to go to multiple persons within an organisation. Um, we keep a full audit trail of any invoices that come through. All invoices uh, are stored on our um, Australian-based APRA-approved data centres, and we give you um, seven years invoice image storage as well onshore. So once that's all been approved, uh, we feed them directly back into your, your Reckon account system. Um, this, of course, you know, as we mentioned, saves a lot of time, a lot of increases in accuracy, and we really want to treat this as an accounting transaction. So we don't look at it as being a, a, a scanning replacement. We're really interested in making sure we go end to end uh, as a proper accounting transaction. So look, I'll give you a quick demo of the, the software. So the way it works is you'll get an, uh, an email every day saying you've got X number of invoices to approve. So what I'm going to do is show you two sorts of scenarios. The first one is I'm going to log in here as the boss. So I'm a final approver. So a, an invoice has been sent directly to DataLine. It's gone through our Accuracy Mate um, checking system. It's been verified as not being a duplicate invoice. It's been verified as being uh, from a, a legitimate supplier with correct ABN, etc. cetera. 
So I'm going to pick this one here, just click that, and all I need to do is authorise this. Now you'll see here that I've got the image stored online, so I can check that up against, make sure all the uh, figures are correct. You'll see here too how it's picked up the GST, um, it's uh, been assigned to a customer job by the AP person who's been processing this, and all I need to do is this is to say confirm it, and that would then flow back into Reckon. Um, I can also at some point decide to forward that over to another approver within my organisation. I could also reject the invoice if I wanted to, send it back to AP saying oh, I have no idea what this is about, or I can dispute it, you know, say look, what, what um, you know, there's a, there's a query on the, uh, the particular details of it. So in this particular case, all I need to do is just click approve, and that invoice has then gone off the approvers list. So really, from the from the boss's point of view, uh, that's all they see. Now the next one I'm going to show you is another slightly different uh, role. This is for um, this is for our accounts payable department. Um, if an invoice hasn't flowed automatically through our accuracy mate system, or if the accounts payable uh, area wants to review each one, um, this is where they'll, they'll end up. So this basically replaces the, uh, the the days of someone in the accounts area grabbing the invoice, manually keying it in, and then allocating it to a, a GL account within the accounting system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a uh, an invoice here. I'm going to grab that one there, and I'm going to allocate that. So this is an, an invoice that currently we don't have any general ledger coding in there. Um, you'll see it's picked up the general ledger coding from the last time this invoice has been coded up, and this information comes straight from uh, straight from from uh, Reckon. You'll also see here we've not only got expense items, but we've decided to allocate some item uh, the the item line as well. Now, you know, it depends on how you want to do it. Um, th this could be, you know, just a single expense line. You could also add ad additional split, so you could split this this uh, this particular invoice over several GL um, lines. You'll see here too the invoice type. Um, the moment I'm just sending it straight to the CEO for approval. But you could also put it on different approval routes. So you might be in an organisation where you have project managers need to have a, a say over an, a, a, an invoice's approval. You might be in an organisation where multiple people need to sign off on an invoice before it flows back into Reckon for final approval. So all I need to do here is, uh, if I want to send it to the, the boss to sign off on, I just click Allocate, and that invoice goes off my list of, of items that needs to be uh, uh, allocated. Now, if I go back to the dashboard, you'll see here that um, a couple of a couple of bits and pieces. One is that um, I've got this exception here. Now, we, as I mentioned, we keep an eye out for invoices that flow into the system that aren't 100% spot on. So, you know, in this particular one, um, we picked up that there's an exception uh, of a duplicate invoice that's been received. So, we'll keep an eye out for duplicate invoices invoices that have been received from incorrect suppliers, you know, um, or invoices that don't have GST correctly calculated. Um, so we can go along and either reject that or we can uh, fix it up. And you'll see here too, pending export, that's an invoice that was just previously approved by the CEO role. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now import that into, uh, into Reckon. Now, when we, um, when we install the, uh, the data line system for you, what we do is we onboard you, we set up our data synchronisation process, which can be run as often as you like. We provide all the training, we provide all the integration with the Reckon account system. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the sync, which you normally would have running every you know, um, hour or so, every half hour, whatever suits you. That will run in the background, and um, hopefully in a moment or so, that new invoice will pop up, as you can see. That's just coming to Reckon. So that would normally run silently in the background. You can see it's got all the, uh, the various um, uh, items that are on the invoice. And we also put a, a memo on there to show that it's been created by, by data line. So, so ideally what would happen is if um, the invoices come directly into uh, 
um, into our centre using our accuracy mate system, we will match up as much data as possible. If they need to be uh, routed by the, uh, the anyone in the accounts area to someone who's in the organisation for approval or for further tweaking of the GL coding, uh, they can do that. Otherwise, they'll just flow straight into Reckon. The other thing too is if I look at, um, if I just refresh this screen, you'll see that pending in, um, export uh, has gone down to zero. Um, we keep a complete activity log of all the invoices that have been um, processed. So if I just look at this one, you can see who authorised it when it was um, handled and of course there's a complete history and audit trial of the, uh, the invoice process. So I suppose in a nutshell that's the, uh, that, that's the data line solution. Uh, what we do is we handle um, invoices um, manually in our centre in Sydney. Uh, we'll make sure that everything that comes in is matched up with data and reckon as, as, to, uh, as far as possible and if there's any further tweaking that needs to be done that can be handled by the accounts payable person. There's multiple levels for approval, there's multiple levels for um, authorisation. Um, you also have the ability to uh, automatically um, send through invoices based on a whole range of other factors. So we're very heavily uh, involved in the setting up of, of the workflow and also of the whole system for you. So really those results we showed earlier on for, uh, for Tony down in Tasmania and we've got a lot of other customers like that we'd like to come and uh, do that for you. We work on the basis that we will give you a 30-day trial, free trial. Um, during that period, as I said, we'll do all the training, all the setup for you. Um, we'll integrate it with your Reckon account system. And um, if you'd like to know any more, please just visit our site and have a chat to us. Uh, anyway, Thank you, Earl. That's, 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 the, that's it, that'll on a nutshell, Jason. That sounds like an easy nutshell to crack, Earl. Thank you very much. Great. I'll just hand back over to myself. Uh, so we'll be asking questions at the end and all the panellists will be here uh, at the end. I've been answering questions one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one, uh, where I can, but we've got some common themes coming through. Uh, something that's come through already is around class tracking. Uh, probably came through from entry lists not having classes on their demonstration, uh, so we'll be asking that one at the end. I know for a fact that entry list does classes. Uh, pretty sure DataLine does too, so uh, the guys at Personable who are up next if you could mention that as well, uh, whether you cater for class tracking, uh, that would be fantastic. So as I said, we've got uh, common questions coming through. The purpose of today's webinar, which we sent out on all of our uh, communications, was around just learning uh, what the technologies are available for your business to make your business more efficient. So hopefully we're answering that for you. We've got three examples today. There are more examples available, but again, it's all around what technology is available in this area. So up next, we've got Personable. Michelle and Chelsea will be doing the presentation today. Personable's got a few applications. They've been a Reckon partner for a number of years now, also based in California over there on the west coast of the US. And the app we're looking at today uh, is ScanRider. It's an award-winning solution for accountants worldwide, uh, also for business owners as well, developed and published by Personable. Uh, ScanRider, in line with the common themes of today, can read documents. Uh, ScanRider actually reads bank statements, credit card statements, bills, invoices, receipts and more. So it's a, it's a more end-to-end -end process around multiple documents, which the guys will get more into today. They 100% guarantee their ac accuracy. They uh, a question that's come through today, a common theme as well, is do I set up my own expenses in, the, in these applications and how do they match with Reckon accounts? Uh, no, they extract all the tax codes, classes, if they use classes, expenses, etc., from Reckon accounts and populate that into their system. So there's no duplication of data, uh, for example. So we'll hand over today to Chelsea uh, and Michelle. So, Michelle is the marketing manager at ScanRider, uh, has a bachelor degree in accounting, so knows the industry quite well. And Chelsea has a bachelor degree in marketing and is the ScanRider product specialist. Uh, Beverly Zhang, the business development manager, is also sitting in. Beverly also has a master's in accounting from Victoria University, been working with accounting professionals for a number of years. So like most in this industry, a lot of experience around accounting as you would expect. So 
we didn't want to bring partners in today who were developers per se and didn't have a real appreciation and understanding of the accounting industry, which makes it even more valuable. So I'll just hand over now to the guys, just bear with me. We are in the US and we've got a couple of presenters for Personable. So I will make Michelle the presenter. She'll be right to go, guys. Okay, so today we're going to show you how ScanWriter quickly and efficiently automates your data entry to Reckon accounts using ScanWriter. ScanWriter is the all-in-one data automation software solution for accounting professionals, and it was developed by us here at Personable Inc., and we're a leading software solutions provider. Personable Inc., we recently conducted a accounting professional survey where we found that 60% of respondents said that they still enter data manually into their accounting software, and 100% of respondents said that time is the limiting factor of their success. So it's our goal to save you that time, and we're going to save you time by showing you different features within ScanWriter, and we're going to show you how to make bookkeeping more profitable. So ScanWriter directly integrates with Reckon. It automates data from any electronic or paper document. So um, there's no manual data entry required. And we do achieve 100% accuracy with every Reckon import. So what can you use ScanWriter for? You can use it for any paper or PDF document, like I said. So bank and credit card statements, bills, invoices, checks, receipts. Anything that's computer generated, ScanWriter can read that. So it saves our accountants 90% more time. It does that through proprietary features that we have, like smart matching. So smart matching is what helps you automate any client workflow. So anything from account payable to monthly reconciliations, um, you can build in different rules for the class, the customer job, the memo, and so on. Um, you can process more data with consistency, and you can complete more projects, and you can do that faster with our auto population features. You will achieve 100% accuracy, and everything will automatically reconcile for you. So you don't need to do anything about the tax. ScanWriter will auto calculate that for you based on your tax code. It'll break it out into different fields for you. You don't need to manually look into that. It will reconcile by month, so you don't need to reconcile transaction by transaction either. And our features will help you achieve 100% accuracy prior to every Reckon import. SourceLink is a feature that we also have. It's a document management solution, and it is directly integrated into Reckon. So if you capture that data using ScanWriter, then SourceLink is going to help you automatically identify where that amount is coming from once you're in Reckon. So it's just a simple click, and it'll pull that document up and locate that transaction for you. It automatically organizes PDFs in a Windows folder structure, and it has different features, like you can leave sticky notes to remind yourself of different activities or specific notes for any transaction that you need to. This is the ScanWriter workflow process, what it looks like from a bird's eye view. So take those credit card statements, bank statements, bills, PDFs. ScanWriter captures the data and it imports it straight into your Reckon software. We also work with other accounting softwares as well. So I'm actually going to hand the presentation over to Michelle, and she's going to be able to show you exactly how ScanWriter works with bank statements and bills today. Thanks, Chelsea. I'm going to go ahead and minimize the PowerPoint, and I'm going to jump into my Reckon Company file, and I'm going to launch our ScanWriter software separately. Will you follow the three steps that you see in front of you? So you can select the company file that you want to work on, you as the accounting professional can add and remove company files as needed. Or if you're an end user, you can just keep the company file you want to use. So we'll go ahead and select AU Sunshine, since that's the file that I have open. And I'll click Use Current. I am getting a message that our connections may not be very good, so let me know if something comes up. It's blinking at me. The next step is the reader management. This is where you tell ScanWriter what type of document you want to process. 
and uh, we can do we can support any type of document. So if you want to process your tables, you can do that. You can even do um, credit card statement as well. So go ahead. Um, before we do that, you need to select a reader. A reader is a file that we create that tells ScanWriter what information is important and how to organize it in your Wrecking Company file. And there's a couple ways for you to get a reader. You can go to our public library that houses over 10,000 financial institutions. Uh, we have international banks, small banks, big banks in the U.S. And so you can, it's kind of like downloading an app to your phone. You search for what bank or financial institution you want to use and download it right away. So for example, um, we have National Australia Bank. And we support a lot of different types of accounts. So you can download the reader from the library. Or if you're using a bank that may not be in there yet, that's OK. You can make a request. And within 24 to 48 hours, that reader will be available to you. And I've never ran into a bank that we couldn't support. So I'll go ahead and close this. And we'll select my National Australian Bank. And then go to Data Import. You can either scan your credit card statement on the fly. That client gave you a bag of paper. You can browse for a specific file. So we'll go ahead and select my credit card statement. Um, you can even select multiple files if you have to do that year's worth or quarter's worth. So we'll go ahead and click Read Data. ScanWriter will go through each page and capture the information that you need. So like I said before, we're doing a credit card statement. Usually we can do one to five seconds per page, really depending on your computer speed. Usually, I just let the software do the work for me. I walk away, grab a cup of coffee, and come back. Um, and you'll see after two how we can process a pile of bills within ScanRider and enter them all into Reckon. Once it's done, it'll give us a nice data preview screen where you can review the information that we have. And you'll see the image of the statements on the left. And the data that we captured will be on the right. Okay. It always tells us if we didn't need a page. So it's told us, hey, page four, you can exclude. So we'll click Continue. We captured a total of 693 data items. That's four pages in 46 seconds. We even give you the total charges and credits. So you can easily compare that to the cover page of the statement. So total credit should be $5,403.75. So that's exactly what we have. And the total payments, if we add up the purchases and interest, come up to the $10,801.47. So we know our data is 100% accurate. I'll go ahead and click OK. When you click on the cell, ScanWriter will highlight exactly where the data comes from. So it's really easy for you to review. We even color code it. The black font means the data is valid. If you see orange or red, like line 29, that means we want you to look at it. So click on the cell, verify the data. You can correct it on the fly if you need it. In this case, it is correct. Usually, if it's orange, it can correct itself. So I'll go ahead and click Next. Well, before I do that, notice that the dates, some date formats are different. This one is the day, and then the month, and then the year. Scanwriter has a lot of features to help you organize the data the way you need it. You can leave it as is, or you can even do a date swap. And it will change and or reorganize the data format for me, and in this case, month, day, and year. So we'll go ahead and click Next. We'll move on to the Reckon Import screen, where it starts talking to your company file. And it'll organize the transactions according to type. So you can see on the top tabs, we have credit card charges and credit card credits. I had a tax professional finish four years worth in three and a half hours. So he was able to complete all the data entry and complete the tax return for the client. So both parties were very happy. So it can really automate this bookkeeping process for you. And it's already asking you what Reckon chart of account or bank account, or in this case, credit account, do you want to import into? So we'll go ahead and pick National Velocity and click OK. I'll show you how to import the charges. We have 62 charges. 
each column is a field. So you have your credit card charge date, the bank, the business name is what we think the vendor is. So out of the entire description, we know that Woolsworth is the vendor. The first time you'll have to match it to the second vendor because we don't know how you have it entered. But once you do it, you, once you set it up, it'll remember for next time. And it'll bring up the last used expense account from your company file as well. So it streamlines that whole bookkeeping process and keeps it consistent. Of course, you can change it on the fly for those special cases. And if I just click on any of these drop-down menus, you can see the full list from my chart of accounts. And if I scroll to the right, we do support all the fields in QuickBooks, class, customer job, the memo field, and so on. And ScanWriter does have special features to accommodate your tax code. We built in a special rule to automatically populate the sales tax code based on your preference. And you can see ScanWriter will automatically back calculate it before it imports so you can double check it. So you can see the amount, back calculate the, next, the net amount, of course you have your tax amount, and all that's all based on the sales tax code that you selected. So once you review the data, you can go ahead and import directly into Reckon. We'll go ahead and click Import on the bottom right. Reminding me to close all windows, we're just going to take a quick peek. Click OK. It's confirming the bank, just in case. And it's even going to check for duplicates for you. So I'll click OK. So you can enter each transaction in. It's as if you're entering each transaction in one by one, as if you did it manually, but of course, a lot faster. So you don't have to manually enter each line item at a time. All right. In addition to entering the data, you'll also see that ScanWriter comes with its own document management solution called SourceLink. And it will automatically sorry about that, link the PDF directly to the QuickBooks record, excuse me, the Reckon record. All right, we'll go ahead and give it a second. It looks like it's still importing. And it'll always give us a confirmation when it's, it's completed. We'll give it a few seconds, and then we'll jump into my Reckon account, do the reconciliation, and you can see it also automatically clears each transaction, so you don't have to do the reconciliation one by one anymore. It'll automatically do that for you. You can also find existing transactions, so you don't have to worry about deleting um, the extra ones or the duplicates. So we entered, or we entered 62 charges in about a minute and a half. So you can see the time savings there. And if I jump into Reckon, we'll go into the reconciliation into my national velocity credit card. I'll go ahead and enter in the ending date. You can see all the transactions on the left are the ones we entered. We focused on the charges, of course, because that's usually where the volume's at. Everything is marked as cleared. And even if I open up a charge, it's a normal record with the vendor, the date, the amount, the account, and you can see the tax code. In addition to that, if someone had a question on this transaction, you can always use our source link to pull up the document that goes with it. So you always have that audit trail. And the best thing about the, bank, uh, the credit card statement being linked is that if you open it through SourceLink, it'll highlight exactly where that transaction came from on the statement. We'll go ahead and give it a second to open. And I'll just scoot it over. You can see it highlighted uh, 611 for a Woolsworth. If I scroll to the right, you can see it's for $103.36, and that's exactly what we have in our record account. So I'm going to go ahead and close this PDF. SourceLink itself is very powerful. You can even link additional information. So let's say you did have the backup receipt for this charge. You can easily scan it in, attach it, and click Save. And now both the bank statements both the bank statement and the credit card are linked to the transaction. I just have to close the reconciliation window before I save it.
And there you go. So that's using ScanWriter with a credit card statement in a nutshell. Um, the same procedure for bank statements. But I'll go ahead and show you another example on how other people have used ScanWriter. And that's for the bills. So I'll go ahead and bring the PowerPoint back up. And before I go into the bills, we are having a special promotion. Okay. We are having a 50% off our license fee, which I'll happily go over in just a few seconds here. So I'll go ahead and jump out of the PowerPoint and jump into my uh, bill example. Let me clean up the screen here. I'm just going to close the preview screen. And I'm going to go back to ScanWriter. And I'm going to let ScanWriter know that I want to process uh, maybe a folder of bills. So the first thing I want to do is select the bill reader. This bill reader can support a lot of different vendors in it. So I'll go ahead and select it. And before I jump into processing it, let me show you how many bills I have to process. So this is maybe pretty typical for a lot of you. You get a pile of bills either from your client or maybe you're opening your mail or email. And you have to process a wide variety of vendor bills. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how ScanWriter can automate the data entry for that. So after selecting the reader, we'll go to Data Import. You can either scan the document if you've got a pile of paper or you're opening up your mail. You can browse for a big PDF if you have one, or you can do a folder read. So I'll go ahead and select that folder that contains all those bills that I saved. I'll go ahead and click OK and click Read Data. Again, ScanWriter will take about one to five seconds per page. But while we're waiting here, because I do have uh, quite a few bills to read, I'm going to go over um, our special promotion that we're so excited to offer you. So it is a 50% off the license. And um, you can make your purchase on this link, and we can make it available either through the chat, um, or you can take it down. It is a landing page where, let me go ahead and show you. Once you go to the page, it'll take you to a sign-up where you can place your order. ScanWriter is a license. A one-user workstation license is a one-time fee of $995 US dollars. That is a one-time fee. For this uh, webinar, for the attendees, we are giving a 50% off the license. So your price would be $4.97 and 57 and 50 cents one time. Okay. There is a to cover training support, software upgrades, and all the bank credit cards and some bills. Uh, there is a monthly. It's $49 a month per active rec and file. Okay. So you pay one time fee and then $49 a month per rec and file if you're an end user. Okay. For accounting professionals, because you manage more company files, um, your price is $10 a month per active rec and file. So it's kind of like a pay as you go. Some clients are quarterly, so you only you're only active quarterly. If they're monthly, then they're monthly. So this is the special promotion. Again, it's 50% off $9.95. And then if you're an end user, it's $49 a month per rec and file. Or if you're an accounting professional, it's $10 a month per rec and company file. Because of this special promotion, it, there, um, it does end by your business day. So go ahead and go to the website. Um, you can get started. We'd be happy to get you started. We do offer training support. It is included with that fee, um, and we are happy to help you. So I'm going to go ahead and check on this reading. It's just about done. While we wait, I'm going to go ahead and post the link one more time for a few more seconds here. And again, it's just the HTTPS scanwriter.personable.com slash reckon2016. All right, so while we're waiting for the bills, we have a few um, testimonials that we would like to show you. We have uh, Rachel Barnett. Um, she is a bookkeeper. 
and she just loves using ScanWriter or ScanWriter to help her with the data entry. She works with a lot of different types of clients, fitness studios, travel agents, direct marketers, and she had a huge project to do. Let me go ahead and minimize that. And she was entering about 100 to 150 transactions per month. And now, instead of spending hours, she can do it in minutes. And then we also have another tax professional, Les Christensen, who also likes to use ScanWriter. He touts that it was taking two hours, uh, manual data entry was taking him about two hours. Uh, but after the first month or two of using ScanWriter, he was down to 15 minutes. So he saw significant savings with using the product on his client. So I'll go ahead and jump back into my scan writer. It looks like it's uh, loading all the bills for us. All right. We're going to go ahead and um, bring this up. While it's loading the data, we're just going to show the link one more time, just in case those of you want to write it down. And then um, I'm excited to show you. Uh, the bills that we're processing for you. I think there's over a hundred of them from all different types of vendors and all different types of formats. So this is just an example of how powerful the product is and what type of documents uh, we can process for you. And it's not limited just to accounts payable. We do have clients using it for receivables as well. And the software is quite sophisticated where you can do detailed light items if needed for those restaurant clients and even all the way to the purchase order, um, find the purchase order. We'll go ahead and show you how that works. And what I might do, guys, just while that's processing, we'll get into the questions. We've got a few questions here that we can round off on. And then I'll make ScanRider or the personable guys presenters again just to show us that last little bit, uh, if you like. So I'll just flick back to myself, if that's OK, uh, Chelsea and Michelle. OK, so we. I'll ask, because we've got a lot of different vendors on, on today, I'll, I'll ask each one in turn. So we might go in the same order as the presentation, guys. So entry list, data line, and personable. Um, and we'll just go through some of the common questions. Uh, for everyone else out there, uh, we will get to your questions. Um, if we don't get to them today, we'll go through each question question individually and get the vendors to get back to you. We've also got a very short questionnaire at the end that asks you, do you want to know more about any of the applications today? Or oh, there's also comments if you want to know more about the integration with Reckon, or if you want to know anything else about today's session, there's also an area to write some short questions. So something that came up today, uh, and let me just make unmute everybody there. So just letting the panelists know that you're all unmuted at the moment. So. Watch what you say in the background, obviously. So we might start with Mike at EntryList or Bobby, whoever's there to take this question. It's come up a lot, so I'll ask this question to everyone and we'll just order, answer this in turn. So the EntryList guys first. Uh, the question came up, do you do class tracking? Now I've used your app myself, so I know it does. I think you just it wasn't turned on in your demonstration. So could you just explain that you do use class tracking? And we might ask a question that also tags into this to all the vendors is, what if the transaction has multiple lines? So if the bill has multiple lines and one has tax on it, so GST for us in New Zealand, or it has um, no GST, how do you split that out? Yes, totally. So on the class part, uh, this is Mike here from Metrolist. So on the class part, uh, we do import that from Recon. Uh, we didn't show it on the demo, but we can uh, gladly uh, show you that in another uh, demo if you book us separately and uh, we import your GST tax codes as well and we import the logic around those tax codes as well. So if you have a bill invoice that is coming from a supplier that is using uh, office expense and uh, that's attached to a GST of 10%, uh, we will automatically capture that so you don't need to uh, select anything from the drop down. And uh, we import as well the suppliers of course and uh, if there's any new supplier uh, from any new bill that you submit, we will create that for you. And we will create that supplier as well in Recon. Uh, that's to the first part of the question on the classes. Uh, on the second part of the question, uh, we do capture the GST separately. So if you have a GST invoice, we capture the, the GST separately from the subtotal. 
and uh, and then we attach 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 that as well to the actual uh, GST code. Now, if um, you have an inclusive uh, invoice that you submit, let's say that you have something from calls or from uh, any other, let's say, supermarket, or you have those small POS uh, transactions, small receipts, you can submit them to Entrelas. Uh, we will uh, make the best effort to make the breakdown because sometimes it might be just a, a receipt that is marked as ten dollars, and uh, it might have to uh, make the breakdown of the GST. So we try to do that if we see the GST inclusive line. If we don't see it. Um, then you will need to simply click on uh, inclusive so you can make the breakdown automatically. So Entrelas does that for you. And on the last part, line items on the bills. So let, we have uh, just a quick reminder that we capture bills, receipts, invoices. So for every individual item, uh, they sometimes come with uh, invoice line items. Right now we capture just the subtotal for every individual bill, but uh, in the coming uh, uh, months for uh, next year we will have the uh, breakdown for the invoice line items. Now, for now, you can make the split and you can uh, individually separate the uh, GST and uh, and as uh, taxable or not taxable, and Entrelas will make the calculation for you automatically. Thank you, Jason. All right, All right great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Earl, over to you for that question. Um, class tracking and also line by line uh, items on a bill. Sure. I'll just uh, I hand over to Mark because we've got you know, answers along those lines. Yes, it's Mark Whelan here. Um, yeah, so we, we, we do similar. So in, in, in terms of um, we, we support the class. So when we sync uh, information with Recon, we actually pull down all the suppliers, pull all the, all the account codes, all the classes. Um, we'll pull all the customer information down as well if you want to assign that to a bill. We pull all the tax codes down. And also we pull down all of the item, the item codes that you've set up. So you can obviously, you might have seen in the demonstration, through the, what we call the GL coding part of our system, you can allocate items. Um, they can be both services and, and stock items. And if um, and, and then when, when, when obviously we sync back and create the bills, it'll automatically update the inventory if it's inventory related. All right, perfect. Thanks, Mark. And that, that is a question that's come across uh, today uh, around inventory. Um, so uh, the guys at Personable, um, Pretty sure it was in the demonstration, but if not, the when we should see the bills, I'm not sure if you've got class tracking turned on. Um, but if you could just let us know, Chelsea or Michelle, whether you do uh, account for class tracking and whether you account for line by line items when you import bills. Yes, we do. We support class tracking and line by line items. We can even automatically populate those fields. Um, and our line item by line item is sophisticated enough to even apply to the whole PO uh, workflow. So yes, we support all of that. All right, perfect. Thank you, guys. Okay, um, now I know Personable went through their pricing model. It is has come up today. Um, how much are your systems? And uh, again, there will be a short survey coming out at the end of the webinar if you want to ask. Uh, if you want to know more detail, we can certainly pass it on to you guys. But we might just have a quick overview again uh, of the pricing, starting with you, Mike. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. So our pricing structure is uh, very uh, competitive. So we charge 29 uh, Australian or New Zealand dollars per, per company. And that allows you to upload up to 300 uh, transactions per month, every month. And then you get the uh, Dropbox, Box, uh, Google Drive integration, and you get uh, added features like uh, approval roles. You get the CPA dashboard, and uh, you get other other items uh, like uh, a smarter search where you can type and search inside the, the transaction. So it's twenty nine ninety nine per uh, per month. So it comes at uh, three sixty dollars per year, and that right now is at a fifty percent discount for the holiday season and for the next two months for all Recon uh, attendees and for all Recon uh, customers, clients. And that's something that, that we have going on, right, Bobby? Yeah, just to add, the, the different versions we have, we have the free version, actually, and the premium version. The free version, the bills will take about a week to process, and you can process up to 300 bills. The premium version will take less than 12 hours to process, and you will be able to get the cloud storage sync and you'll be able to process things, um, I think I mentioned, in less than 12 hours. 
Um, also, the, for the people who has more than 300 bills for the clients, we have another version. It's $49.99 and it can process up to 2,000 bills. So it's three versions, free, $29.99 up to 300 bills, and $49.99 up to 2,000 bills. Thank you, Jason. All right, and that was Australian dollars, guys? Yeah, absolutely. That is correct. And in New Zealand, uh, it will be New Zealand dollars uh, for customers that are yep. in New Zealand. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, Earl, over to you. Yeah, okay. So we, we start off pricing-wise um, about a dollar an invoice with some fairly steep volume discounts, um, and that includes the manual checking of each invoice onshore in Australia, um, seven years data storage, and uh, with that uh, we also include all the training and setup and installation uh, with a 30-day free trial, and uh, we bill you at the end of the month too. So um, that, that's, that's our pricing structure generally. Okay, just on that question, Earl, and I'll throw this back to the other guys in turn. Uh, data storage, that's also a common question that came through today. Um, are there limits to your data storage? Uh, and if so, what are they? And yes, how, how long do you hold that data for? Well, um, from our point of view, is, uh, we, we keep it for a minimum of seven years, as I said, in a, an APRA centre, a approved data centre. Um, and there's no limits on the storage. Um, if there are uh, PDFs or other documents that we receive which have got additional pages um, attached to the invoice, uh, we store those as well. So, and we also allow you to assign attachments during the, the approval process. So, you know, proof of delivery, all that sort of stuff, they can also be uh, put in the system too. Right. Thanks, Earl. Um, Michelle or Chelsea over at Personable, um, data storage. Um, I know you can attach the receipts to the actual transaction, so is, is the document being stored locally on the machine or are you guys hosting it? And if you could give us a bit of information around that. That's a good question. The source link stores your documents, it uses Windows, meaning that you can choose the location where you want to store it, on your local computer, your own file server, or on some type of uh, cloud system. Um, so it's all Windows based, you don't have a limitation on how many documents you can store. Right, perfect. Thanks, guys. Okay, a, a question. Uh, sorry, Mike, over to you. I don't think I didn't give you the chance to answer that one. Mike or Bobby, um, data storage of the yeah, documents. How long? How long for? And is there a is there a size and you know type limit? Yeah, there's a the, the only uh, file limit size is uh, 12 megabytes uh, for uploads, and on emails is uh, 20 megabytes per, per email, and uh, the minimum uh, storage is well seven years, and we keep those uh, transactions. Uh, the volume is as far as uh, you have them, uh, uh, 300 bills, uh, even within your allowance per month, uh, those, those are covered. Um, so you, you have everything is covered as far as the bills that you submit to EntryList, they will ne never get deleted and they will be stored uh, at all times in EntryList. It's just, it's just to add, the 12 megabyte upload is basically when you enter the bill. So if you put in a bill into the system, it needs to be less than 12 megabytes. That's the only thing. I mean, 12 megabytes is like you have a thousand pages bill. Yeah, and, and this is a store uh, in the cloud, in uh, entryless.com, and it's accessible at any time uh, from any computer. So that, that's another thing that uh, uh, it's, it's great to have. Yeah, there's no limitation how many bills you can put into the system. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So while well, I've got you guys there, um, a question that's come through quite a lot, uh, probably a little bit more than I would have thought about was if there's a purchase order already in Reckon Accounts, um, normally when you enter the, a bill manually into Reckon Accounts and there's a purchase order, you'll get a pop-up saying a purchase order or, uh, exists for this supplier or vendor as you call it in the States. Uh, do you want to attach it to a purchase order and you go and select the purchase order? Uh, so starting with Mike and Bobby at Entryless, uh, when, you, when there is a purchase order already in the system um, and you're importing a bill in uh, from Entryless, how does it or can it attach to it, that purchase order? Yeah, great question. So we do capture the PO number if it's available on uh, the document that is being submitted to Entryless, but at this time we don't have any further work, uh, workflow to attach that into uh, Recon. Uh, since we're just launching, uh, we, we don't have that functionality, but uh, that for sure is, will be coming in the, in the next months where you will be able to attach them to a PO. All right, no problem. Earl or Mark, over to you. 
Yes, we uh, at, at this stage um, we will be implementing support for purchase orders and reckon a little while down the track we will be matching up data um, with purchase orders that have been put into Reckon. Uh, we'll also be bringing in a separate purchase order uh, management system to market uh, in the coming months that has full workflow and approval processes as well. So not only can you um, look at uh, you know approvals of, of bills and invoices um, after the fact, you'll be able to put workflow around prior to that, in other words, who can raise purchase orders and to what limits, etc. So. Um, yeah, it's it's something which we uh, support in our other products, and we'll be uh, integrating further within Reckon. Okay, and personable. Yes, um, Scanwriter does support um, when you enter the bill through Scanwriter. It can apply that bill to that open purchase order in Reckon. It can even help you reconcile the item per item, so you don't have to do it manually. Um, and we also do the other side of receivable. You can apply a deposit to a. Uh, uh, receive payment, and we've had these uh, features for over three years, so we've had a uh, full workflow and um, a lot of intelligent features to help through that process. Yep. Okay, great. And it is important to, to note to all of our listeners today uh, and viewers that um, you know these apps are quite different. You know, they've all got different features. So you know, do your due diligence, ask more questions, uh, because it's not a it's not a um, one application fits all scenario. And they've all they've all got points that are, are more purposeful to um, what you're trying to achieve at your business for sure. Um, while we've got personable still there, um, we might just ask about the scanning of documents. Uh, we had a few questions come through saying we automatically scan all of our documents and they save as a particular uh, file name. Um, does that have any effect on how that is, attaches to the transaction or enters the transaction in your system? Uh, no effect. You can name the file whatever you'd like. It just has to be a, a PDF. So you're flexible there. All right, perfect. Um, over to you, Mike, on that question. Uh, yeah. So uh, just just a quick clarification on the PO. You can you can always uh, attach it on uh, on Recon. So that's something that we don't uh, stop you from doing. So you can you can totally do that uh, on the on the Recon uh, ecosystem. Now on. Uh, on, 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 can you repeat the last question, please? Uh, with um, if somebody's scanning a PDF, does it make any difference what the PDF name of the file is when it's? Oh yeah, uh, coming no, it doesn't. Uh, you can send invoices in a PDF. You can put any name, and uh, you can also submit JPEGs, PNGs, scans, and uh, it doesn't matter if uh, you have a, a scanner that has OCR or it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't really matter because as far as uh, the entryless system is concerned, we just need a file that uh, represents a bill. So it can be a handwritten note, it can be uh, an email as we've shown on the demo, and uh, entryless is just going to convert and, uh, and, and, and create an expense out of it. So there's no limitation on, uh, on that end. Yep, okay, perfect. Um, same for you all, I'm assuming. Yeah, um, yeah we, we're really not fussed about the, the naming format. Um, you know, if it's uh, scan and email to us or just forwarded from a supplier, you know, we're not, not fussed about the name of the, um, the document. Um, we're, we're really more interested in the contents of it and extracting all the information directly from it. All right, no problem. We had a few questions about free trials as well. Um, that's probably best handled, guys, if you get the webinar through. Um, and you may be watching this webinar on behalf of somebody else and the webinar questions will go to them, so just be careful of that. But um, if you do want questions about trials, um, some of the guys do, some of the guys don't. Um, but I'm sure there's demonstrations or they can sort something out for you. So we might deal with that on a one-on-one -on -one basis um, if you can't find that information on their website. Uh, so please then keep entering your questions. Obviously, we're not going to get them to them all today. We've only got a few minutes left. And I do want to jump back to ScanRider uh, with Personal just to show those bills in the system. So please get ready for that, uh, Chelsea and Michelle. Um, so yeah, keep entering those questions in and we'll definitely get back to you. Uh, I'll get the questions out to all of the vendors by week's end and we'll get them back to you um, as soon as possible. Um, now, I don't want to put anyone on the spot out there, but this has probably been the most asked question of the webinar. Um, obviously, we sent this out to desktop customers. Uh, some of our hosted customers also have a desktop license, so they would have uh, received this email as well. So we did have quite a lot of questions about um, vendors' intentions of linking to our Reckon Accounts hosted uh, application. So, uh, Mike, I know we've already discussed this, so I'm pretty sure it's on the roadmap for you guys. 
I uh, don't want to hold you to any timelines, but we might just go through every one and um, so they can list their intentions of our, our hosted uh, system and possibly even reckon one our cloud application if you've uh, got any intentions there. So over to Mike and Bobby at Entryless. Thank you, Jason. Uh, yes, totally. Our intentions are to, to move forward in, in that way. Uh, our first integration is just a step forward in the right direction. And uh, we have the compromise with, uh, with Recon to further develop uh, this relationship and bring it to the benefit of uh, all your clients. So we're very excited about it. Thank you. All right, perfect. Uh, Earl, uh, I know we've already discussed other systems as well, but if you could just clarify uh, this for the audience, what the intentions of uh, Dynalon are moving forward with other Recon um, applications? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Look, certainly um, our intention is obviously to continue to support Reckon, and we'll be moving forward with the hosted system. Uh, you know, once once we get the uh, um, the, the desktop uh, up up and running and really out in the field. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to further work with with Reckon, and uh, certainly we're looking forward to feedback from the customers in terms of where they'd like to see uh, features and uh, improvements as we go along. So, we're in this for the long haul, you might say. You've been around for 25 years, so possibly. Uh, Reckon's a 30-year-old company. Um, should just point that out to everyone as well. We've obviously been known uh, by QuickBooks in Australia for a long time, and, and we have a lot of different applications. So uh, hopefully we're getting the Reckon name out there. I know it's hard in the US for the guys to say Reckon. Uh, you know, I totally appreciate that, and thanks for uh, trying your hardest to get the Reckon name out there. Uh, so we might just flick back. Um, I'll make uh, Michelle the presenter. Um, over at uh, Personable, we might just uh, flick over to you guys quickly just to show those bills coming in. We've had quite a few questions just wanting to see the end to end. Um, but before we do that, I just want to say to everyone, uh, thanks for attending. Um, I'll close off in a minute just with some uh, maybe one more question because uh, we've got a lot of them coming through and most of the attendees have stayed on the line, so we really appreciate that. Uh, so over to you, Chelsea. All right. Um all right. Can you, all right. Thank you so much. I'm not going to go through the whole process since I already showed you the credit card statement, but I did want to show you the power of the product. So we captured uh, 2,055 data items. That's 170 pages worth of vendor bills. Um, it took the whole thing took about six minutes, so that's about two um, two seconds per page. So you can see the power behind it. You don't need a, any special scanner, just a PDF document. And um, so again, and when I click on the file, you can see um, how accurate the data is and where we capture the data. And when I click on another cell, you can see that the image changed. So I just wanted to show you the power behind the product. We, just, we do support bank statements, credit cards, bills, receipts, uh, checks, anything that's computer generated. And we can help you process um, any volume of uh, documents into Reckon. So thank right. you so much. Yes, and uh, look forward to hearing back from all of you. Cheers, Chelsea. Thank you for that. So, everybody, I've just got a couple of more questions uh, that we might go through. So thank you for staying on the line. As I said, most people have, have stayed with us, which is great. And we, join, we generally do find this uh, throughout our sessions. Just to surmise on, on most of the questions, class tracking, yes. Multiple line variations, yes. Uh, each application deals with that differently, and hopefully we explain that. But obviously, you know, these systems, it's pretty hard to show in 20 minutes, but we do appreciate your attendance. Today was more about showing you what is available, and, and certainly on that webinar questionnaire, if you've got any more questions, let us know. Pricing is in Australian dollars for entryless and, or New Zealand dollars as well for entryless, uh, depending on which country you're in. Uh, they definitely work with our New Zealand guys. Data line Australian dollars and personable in US dollars. Uh, it's fairly, pretty clear on the pricing there. And as you note, uh, Entryless and Personable had their offers today. We talked about data storage. So all the guys hold the data for seven years. With Personable Scan Writer, the data is held on your own system. So you can hold it as long as you want. Or as Chelsea was saying, uh, apologies if that was you, Michelle, but. Uh, Chelsea was saying you can save it in your Dropbox, for example, on your local machine, and that obviously will go to the cloud as well. Multiple tax lines, we talked about that. Other guys, as I said, handle them all differently. And renaming the scanned document, do they need to, or do you need to rename your scanned document as you're sending them through? And, and no, you don't. 
We had another question here around uh, multiple companies, guys. So we might just end off there because it's in line with the pricing. Uh, a lot of our customers have multiple QBW files on their system, so uh, Reckon Company files. And I know uh, Personable mentioned it was it was per Reckon file, so that's okay. I don't think we need any input from you guys. But Mike and um, Earl, if you could probably explain the pricing, is it on unlimited invoices, no matter what they're attached to, or is it a one-to-one it -one connection with a Reckon file per your account? So maybe Mike and Bobby can, from Entralist can answer that one. Yeah, so the, the 300 is per, per company and per account. So that's something that we do not have time today, but Entralist, uh, the architecture that uh, how we build it is that you can have as many companies as you would like. So if you have, let's say, 10 clients, you can add those 10 clients from day one, and every client is going to have those separate 300 bills per company, per client, and it's going to be per month. So that's something that to totally take take advantage, and the uh, recording or, or the storage of uh, those bills apply the same. It says uh, we keep them for at least seven years, that's the guarantee, but uh, we don't delete any item unless you request us uh, to do that. Uh, also, i like to add that right now we have up to 2,000 bills uh, till the end of the year. Uh, if you can submit, you, you can submit up to 2,000 bills. So if you want to bring clients and uh, get them up to date, uh, that's something that you can do, and uh, you'll continue to have access to that. So we essentially don't delete anything. So to summarize, the charge is per client. That each client you have will have their own separate uh, 300 bills uh, per month. So it's per client. There's no limitation to how many sub-users you can add. Thank you, Jason. Earl, on yours. Uh, yeah, we, we're adding in support for multiple company files, and um, it's um, the same charge no matter how many company files you've got. We have uh, accountants using this to help manage their clients, and from we just treat that as one site, and we just add them all together. So, and we even allow our billing to go through um, an accounting firm if need be. So, and because we've got role-based role -based access, you can also control who can get access to what individual company file for approvals, etc. All right, perfect. Thanks, guys. And we just had some more questions around class tracking. So if you missed that earlier, yes, the guys can class track and at the line level. Um, and also, I should ask personal, actually, because uh, Entryless, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but uh, you only deal with uh, general ledger account codes at the moment. You don't do items. So for inventory, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, Earl, Mark mentioned that you're handling inventory on the item tab in the bill, uh, so just get you to clarify that. Yeah, that's correct. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. And Chelsea, what about items in Reckon Accounts? Uh, do you handle items or just chart of account expenses? Uh, we handle both item and expense, but can I also clarify the our per company pricing? You only pay for active company files. So if someone's quarterly, you, don't, you only pay four times a year for that. So it's only for active company files with us. All right, perfect. And just one question around multi-currency, Chelsea? Yes, we do handle multi-currency. All right, no problem. Uh, Market data line? Yeah, that, that's true. So it, it, it really depends on, on how, how stuff's set up in Reckon. Yep, all right. Cheers, Mark. And yeah, there are some limitations in Reckon around multi-currency and passing that through with integrated applications. Generally, it's converted back to the home currency. It's more of a limitation of us, uh, not the app. But yeah, talk to the guys about that. Only two people ask this question, so it's not widely widespread, and we can definitely pass that on to the vendors, guys. Entry list around multi-currency, so if you're scanning a bill uh, that has US dollars on it for an, a New Zealand client, for example. Yeah, that's something that right now we do not handle. You'll need to uh, change that in, uh, in Rika. All right, uh, that brings us to the conclusion. I can see that most attendees have still stayed on the line, so we really appreciate your time. Uh, you should be able to see on my screen, visit us at academyau.reckon.com. There'll be a recording of this webinar up on our site, uh, hopefully within around uh, five to 10 working days. If you've got any questions about today, please email them through to training at reckon.com, and the guys in that team will forward those to me, and I'll send them out to the presenters. And of course, we've got the question there at the end. So if you want to know anything else about uh, any of the applications today, please let us know. Thank you guys uh, for attending, especially from the US. Uh, late afternoon there, Earl in Chatswood, Sydney, and Mark. I uh, really appreciate that. Chelsea and Michelle from Personable, 
and Mike and Bobby, of course, from Entryless. So we hope you've enjoyed getting a bit of an insight into some of the new applications coming online with us here at Reckon. We've got many more to come. Uh, we've got about 700 add-on partners all up, so we hope to uh, bring you a lot more of these tight uh, educational webinars into the future about what's available with us. So thank you, everyone attending, and thank you for the presenters today. And I'll hand over to Charlotte now to close the webinar. Thanks, guys.